Smithy started at AWS at Amazon Web Services, and it's actually usable for their public offering for the services that we as paying customers can use. So for example, DynamoDB or Kinesis or the Translate service. All of this can be used through Smithy because there are Smithy specs published somewhere. They aren't fully official, so I will link them in the description and probably on the screen, but it's not something we will be looking at and it's in the JSON form, in the AST form. Uh, you could have seen that if you watched the CLI video. By the way, this video has like almost no prerequisites, just like Scala knowledge and basic Smith for a setup. So if you haven't seen all the previous ones, don't worry. We will not need a lot of that knowledge here. With that in mind, it's just worth knowing that not all the services are available because there may not be specifications published for them. And also the implementation of AWS support in Smithy 4S is not like fully stable. There are still some bugs and some missing features in some of the services and endpoints. So for example, S3 support is very minimal, if any. So before you fully commit to the idea of using Smith4S for your AWS service, make sure that it actually works in this setup. So do some experiments, uh, follow along this tutorial with the service of your choice if you want. But yeah, don't try to sell it to your team unless you first try it out. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm trying from a brand new project. This is just an SBT project with just one Scala file, which I'll be looking at in a second. Uh, we are on Smith for a 01819, and I have just the Ember dependencies. I think I just need a client actually. And there's one thing that we need to do first. We need to say which services we want to use. Uh, in our example, we will be using the translate service. So I'll say Smith for us AWS specs, and I will add AWS Translate. Uh, this has like completions, you can use this to find the service of your choice. Not all of them work, but you know, this is just a helper for you. And once I have that, I will need to add the Smithy 4S AWS interpreters, which at the moment they live in this module. So Smithy 4S, AWS, HP 4S. I will import my build now, and I'll also open an SBT shell in the meantime so that I can show you in more detail what's happening. So when I hit compile, you'll see that I have 119 Scala sources. At the moment, this is how many I get. This was all generated from the Translate service. I chose that service specifically because it has not that many sources, but there are some that will generate hundreds, if not thousands of files. So be careful and I'll tell you what you can do to avoid such large numbers of files, as well as what you could do to kind of optimize your feedback loop. So the files have compiled and I think I can assume that Bloop also finished. In case you didn't know that when you're working in Metals, you are by default uh, with SBT is going to use Bloop as the build server. And Bloop has like separate compilation runs and target directories from SBT. So when you compile an SBT, that is not at all coupled to how Metals through Bloop will compile your sources. You can switch to SBT as your build server, or you can just use the Bloop CLI and just work with the Bloop setup. But here I just wanted to show you SBT. So uh, so there's that, and normally Bloop, I think, is a great build server for most things. So this is our main class. Uh, also, you can take a look at the generated code. It's all there in source manage Scala. That's a lot of stuff. We're not going to look into it so much. One more thing before we continue. When you're doing this and you actually want to call AWS, just make sure you have the right credentials in scope. So if you need some environment variables, you need to make sure that whatever will run your code, like SBT, has them in scope. If you have some credentials in files, make sure they're up to date and they're refreshed, they're still active. So you can check that, for example, with the AWS CLI, uh, which I do have at the moment. So I can say translate list languages. I think that's the call, yeah. So this is the list of languages that we can use for translation. It works in the CLI, so I can only assume that it will also work in SBT. Worth noting, smithy 4 us re-implements credential handling, so it may not handle all the kinds of credentials that you can use to log into AWS. It does handle the credentials file in like the standard locations, and it also handles environment variables. But things like SSO may be tricky. So also make sure that you can actually use this setup. If not, you may have to implement like your own credentials provider, which shouldn't be that difficult. Just know that it, it may be a necessity. The trade-off is that Smith4S works on all platforms. So Scala.js, Scala Native, Scala JVM, of course. 
So we could be using this, you know, in Node.js or in a native binary, and this will be the same setup and the same files. So that's the trade off of not having access to, for example, the whole credential chain of the JVM AWS SDK. Okay, so just know that. And yeah, we are starting with just the Ember client builder. You may have noticed this is AWS HTTP4S. So any HTTP calls made to AWS will use some HTTP4S client. And this is the one that I had chosen to use. So before we make any calls to the translate service, I need to create a client somehow, some interpreter. And I will be using AWS client for this. First, we pass translate as the name of the service. Uh, and then I'll need to pass something else, which is the AWS environment. I don't have one yet, so I'll make one. And we can do this with AWS environment default. Uh, it's default with all the credential handling that I mentioned before. But as I also said, you can implement your own AWS environment to have like your own credentials provider if you need to. So just always know it's an option. You can implement this and then you pass that to AWS client, whatever it is. Uh, so I'll pass my HP first client and you also need to specify the region. So I'll use uh, just US East one because it's the one that I actually remember where it is. And this is a resource so I can use it or I can flat map on it. I think I'll just use it uh, for simplicity. And this is gonna be my environment. And with my environment, I can finally create my AWS client. And that is also a resource, so I still need to use it. Uh, that's going to be my translate service. Now let's just make everything compile and yeah, take a moment. So my setup part is complete and now I can get to actually calling the service. Uh, so I will just rely on completions to tell me what the required parameters are. So translate, uh, I think the operation is called translate text. Uh, there are others as well. You can see translate documents, translate, there's create parallel data, whatever that is, terminology. We can list the languages. So exactly what I did in the CLI. There's some optional parameters which I could have specified, but I didn't in the CLI call. And you know, they are also here. This is the same thing. So I'm going to translate text. This is a bounded length string. So I assume this is going to be a new type of some sort. So text is going to be bounded length string, and it does appear to be a new type. This is probably the apply method of it. So I'm going to translate, I love my subscribers. And uh, what else do we need? We need some more parameters. We need source language code and target language code. So uh, what types are these? These are language code string. I would have wanted an enum, but I think this is you know, intentionally open so that you can add new languages in the future. They can add them. And this is going to be from English and we'll use whatever language Copilot suggests. So that's going to be Spanish. So I will not be able to validate that this is the correct answer. Uh, but yeah, let's take the result of that. And I will print response uh, translated text. And that's also yeah, we're going to also unwrap it. Once we have done that, this should all compile and I can try to run it. Let's see what happens. Quite surprisingly, it worked the first time. So this is the Spanish translation. I hope it's correct. We can also try Polish uh, so that I can actually tell you. And that's actually valid. So yeah, uh, it seems to work. Uh, it seems to work fine. You can build whatever you want with these APIs. Just remember it costs money to make these API calls. I don't even know how much this costs, but I'm just hoping it's not too much or that there is a free tier. If I have the number by the time I publish this, I'll, I'll put it here. <laughs> so let's see what we have here, right? If you've seen the previous videos where we sometimes looked into the generated code, you recognize that there's like a service and a service gen. So here we have a translate. That's an alias for translate gen. And translate gen is this huge, huge structure, actually a trait but it's a huge thing that was generated by Smith4S. And this doesn't actually depend on Smith4S, AWS, HP4S. In fact, it doesn't depend on HP4S at all. So we can imagine that this could possibly generate much more than like 120 files, then it might be a good idea to kind of split up our build. For example, to separate out the generated code from everything that we write ourselves. So how would you do that? Well, we can make a module like Smithy models, 
let's set some settings from here. I'll just copy everything for, for now and also the plugin. And let's selectively remove them. So no HTTP4S. And instead of Smith4S, AWS HTTP4S, we'll use the kernel. That's just going to have the minimal number of files from Smith4S that we need to actually compile this. And we will set everything else. So unused imports, I guess I can skip this one. Fork is not necessary because we will not be running this. The specs I still need and the plugin I definitely need. Now in my root, I no longer need the Cogen plugin. I no longer need any of the Smith4S stuff that runs at build time, only the compile time runtime stuff. So uh, the interpreter still has to stay here. And we also need a dependency on our Smithy models project. Now, if I import that, we should have the same outcome, except, you know, the Smithy models will compile on their own. And things that we do in our main class, in our main module, will not affect that code and it will not clash. And, you know, we can possibly get a more optimized workflow because of the faster feedback loop. And I just realized that I made a typo is kernel. Let's run that one more time. And it still works, right? So uh, now let's say if I did root clean and I run it again, it would compile very fast because the only thing it has to recompile is the main class, which is the same if we did just, you know, incremental compilation if we didn't clean uh, in the past. So if I make some changes here and I hit compile, it's very fast because it's just, actually this was almost instantaneous. Let's do something for real. So maybe translate service. Uh, so yeah, it compiles just one scale source, but this would have been the same before, before we even created the Smithy module. But now I can actually do root clean, which you know, does more than just recompile. Now it deleted all the targets of root of this root module. And if I compile again, it's just that. So yeah, this is a useful way to kind of separate things out for more optimization. I believe you can also benefit from SBT's caching mechanism, like compilation caching or a remote cache of compilation. So this could help you uh, a lot, possibly. And if you're wondering why Smooth4S doesn't just provide compiled versions of these specifications, uh, you know, jars that would contain compiled Scala code, just think of how many jars you would have to publish. So for each service, for each Scala major version, and also for each Scala target platform, so native, JS, and JPM. On top of that, there's also versioning problems. So how do we version these things against Smith4S, against the AWS specs? So yeah, there's just some complexity, some nuance in making this happen. And we as Smith4S maintainers are just not ready to take that effort yet or possibly ever. We'll see, I guess, but at the moment, this is something we are not doing. So just keep it in mind. However, there's one more thing that you can do, and it's actually far easier to set up than like a remote cache, which is limit the amount of code that you generate. For example, in here, I'm only using one operation out of like 18 operations. I don't need them all. I just need this one. And there's actually a way in Smith4S to just generate the selected operations of a service. And this is by tagging the operation with a trait. It's called only and it lives in the Smith4S protocol. And let's try to do that. So as you could have seen before, I do not have the Smithy files for the translate service. I just say AWS translate. So we'll have to add my trait somewhere else. And let's just create a Smithy file in my Smithy models. So source main Smithy extras smithy, we'll set the version. And now, if you've seen the previous video, I talked about the apply keyword, and this is exactly what we're gonna use. We're gonna find the operation that we actually are using, its shape ID, and we will apply the only trait to that operation. So this is translate text here, uh, but I'm interested in its corresponding uh, operation object. It should be here somewhere. Maybe it's uppercase. Translate text. Let's do a case sensitive search. There it is. And we can find its shape ID right here. So it's come Amazon AWS translate translate text. So I will do apply this translate text only. And for only I will use the Smith 
meta only, I will need to be in some namespace. It doesn't really matter what it is. So I'm just gonna use extras and that should work. But the meta trait, the only trait doesn't get resolved. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, the one with make sense. There's a missing dependency not being added to Maven dependencies in the Smith4S update LSP config task. This is how I generated this file, by the way. Uh, actually, let me, let me delete this and regenerate it because of this, the smithy models change. So yeah, okay, this is now more accurate, but still doesn't have that thing. So we'll have to add it by hand. So that's the protocol jar and hopefully in just a second we'll have it. Yeah, I'm going to keep this because troubleshooting of the ID is something you have to do quite often at the moment. I may have to remove the build directory. And now if we restart the LSP server again, we're almost there. So the meta trait actually exists now, but translate text doesn't. Oh yeah, this is the same problem. Uh, we don't have the dependency generated here. And I also wanted to show you that. So how do we find the dependency? There's a setting that we can look at in SBT. And now Smithy models, I have to actually scope my setting uh, with the project because we are not, no longer generating code in the root module. So Smith4S, AWS, uh, spec dependencies and I need to show here. So this is the full artifact of the AWS translate service spec. If you fetch that with something like Cursier, you'll find uh, that there is like a single jar here. And if I open that, there's going to actually be uh, a Smithy file, a Smithy IDL file. Uh, just know that this is not what AWS publishes. This is a result of some pre-processing. Uh, we normally get a JSON file. This is just something that Smith4S maintainers have published. So yeah, just a piece of trivia here. But why we're checking this is, well, I need to put this into my dependencies and maybe this fixes our problems. Maybe with a reload? No, maybe with a removal of build and reload? Yes, finally it works. So this is the, the spec of translate text. You can use this to look at which operations are available and so on, uh, actually here in operations in here. So yeah, that's the list of, list of operations uh, available in the service, but we've already seen that in the Scala code. So now when we rebuild everything, let's say we, com we clean and we compile again, we should only compile, yeah, not, now that's 24 Scala sources, not 120. So this should be a good piece of advice if you have a service that's like 2K files. So yeah, definitely give this a go if you have a lot of code to generate. Just using this only thing uh, can probably save you hours of build time. So definitely give it a go. So yeah, this is AWS support in Smith4S. I know it doesn't seem like much because it's just the usual Smith4S workflow that we are seeing. It's just some stuff on the build side and also this AWS environment and client. Other than that, everything else is just like with normal Smith4S. We can do things like surface errors. We can create fake instances of our service, for example, with new translate default uh, IO. Now I can just implement like translate text and this is like a fake instance of my service. This is an ugly type alias for IO of translate text response. Uh, but yeah, like, all of this works. This is just me for S code. It's not very specific to AWS. So yeah, I hope this was useful. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.